RadioInfluence.com. You are in the trenches with former Buccaneers offensive lineman Ian Beckles on Radio Influence. Hello, everybody. This is Ian Beckles, and welcome back to In the Trenches. Uh, it's nice to win. Um, the Buccaneers figure out a way to go to Philadelphia, get that done in a game that, um, like, when you win on the road, it's a big win and it's a good win, regardless how much you win by. The Philadelphia Eagles are not a crazy talented team. As you watch them, I don't know if they could beat the Buccaneers in any situation. I really don't. They fought, and they're still fighting for their coach. That's all good. You go on the road, you get a win. It's a beautiful thing. To me, it's it's really more important to, to get things established. I think it's more important to come out of Philadelphia with a win, pat, rush the passer a little bit better, which they did a little bit better yesterday. Like, sometimes you don't have to worry about statistics as much. You know, watching that game yesterday, I think the Bucks had two sacks. Um, but you really look at it, Shaquille Barrett was, you know, after Hurts a lot, harassing him. You want to get him off his point. Jalen Hurts is, you know... I, I don't know if Jalen Hurts starts in the NFL next year, okay? And I don't want to knock him by any means, but he's just, you know, 100 and some yards passing in a game where you're behind most of the time. You know, that's that's not really, that's not an, an equation to to win a Super Bowl anytime soon. So uh, that's their problem. We don't have to worry about that. We have Tom Brady who went into the game with a bum uh, thumb. You know he's going to play 34 for 42, 297 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. 102 passer rating. He looked fine to me. Uh, got hit too much. I don't like to see Tom get hit at all. It would be nice if they put him in a plastic bubble. That'd be better. Um, to me, Antonio Brown looks 25. He looks so young and spry and quick. Coming out of breaks, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Godwin looked okay. It was a, a it was a, a lesser game for Mike Evans, but you know you don't want to trip on that. Because it's going to go back and forth. And it's going to be A.B., it's going to be Godwin, it's going to be Mike Evans. When Gronk comes back, he'll get a couple games where it's going to be him. Um, but you didn't hear as much uh, from Mike Evans yesterday. Only had four targets. And Tony Brown had 13 targets to, you know, to Mike Evans' four. Now, you never hear of players complaining while your team is winning. But I'm going to let everybody know this. When you're a, a go-to receiver, and Mike Evans is a go-to receiver and you only have four targets, that's not going to go well in the, in the meeting rooms. It's not, okay? It's not like Mike Evans is at a point where he's getting double teamed more than everybody else. If you're a defender right now, I don't know why you wouldn't double team AB more than Mike Evans. But Mike Evans is going to watch that film and see one one receiver with 13 targets, and he got four targets. Receivers don't give a shit. I'm just letting you know. They, they just don't. They want the ball regardless. And if you watch Tom Brady, the way Tom Brady orchestrates his offense, Ain't nobody open. There's like when you watch, you know who was open? OJ Howard in the back of the end zone was open. Okay. Just yesterday on the show, somebody said, Hey, what do you think of OJ Howard and his play? And this is what I said yesterday before the game. All I see OJ Howard do is catch touchdowns on the backside of misdirections wide open, which is exactly what happened yesterday. Like, what that's, he ran the right route, it was the right timing, great. But that's not what makes you great. O.J. Howard, you know why Gronk is great? Because when it's two-on-one or one-on-one, you put the ball in the air, Gronk comes down with the ball. Can you say that about O.J. Howard? I've not seen it yet, and we've had him for a long time. You know, I don't I don't think O.J. Howard's here next year. I really don't. You know, Gronk's old. Cameron Bray, we may have a whole new tight end room next year. That's very, very possible. Uh, if you guys ever want to email me, it's Ian Beckles at radioinfluence.com. We got here from one from Pizza Lover. How can the refs look at a play for a possible interception over and over and not call the pass interference that caused the possible interception? Well, that's easy, uh, Pizza Lover. You can't review inter- uh, you know pass interference, but you can inter- you can review an interception. Now, when something's called one way, if it was called an interception and you reverse it. It's supposed to be, you know, just like there's no doubt, okay? Now, how can you look at something for 10 minutes and there's no doubt? How is that possible? I watched that thing 30 times. You cannot see that football move. No way. You can't see it move. 
it moves a little bit, but you can't see if the hand isn't underneath it. So the play should have stood the way it was. So to me, the whole review thing to me, uh, I don't I don't get it anymore. It doesn't make sense, and I wish they would get rid of it because all it's really doing is makes is making sure I go to bed later than I actually do. So sit there for 15 minutes and watch that shit. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. Now, obviously, I'm nitpicking with O.J. Howard, but listen, O.J. Howard's a, a, a first-round draft pick, okay? And here's a guy that we have to figure out by the end of this year whether he's going to be worth re-signing. So I want to see a few things before it's all over, before we make that uh, decision. We have to make some decisions at running back at the end of this year as well. Leonard Fournette right now is trying to make some money, okay? Uh, Rojo is an afterthought because Leonard Fournette, when he gets the ball, he's running angry, real angry. He's running like he's trying to get paid, and that's the best guy. Now, if you pay him, you don't know if he's going to keep on running that way. But right now, Leonard Fournette is running as angry as I've seen him. The Bucks having 31 rushes, to me, is almost more important the amount of yards that you get because, to me, it's all about balance coming towards the end of this year. And, uh, listen, it was a slow wide receiver day in general. We didn't have a great day at wide receiver. It wasn't a bunch of numbers like we normally have, and I'm okay with that. Defensively, only had two sacks. Um, they only had the ball for 20 minutes. We had the ball for 40 minutes. So you could say the game was close score-wise, but the game wasn't that darn close. I thought Shaq Barrett was going after it. And listen, the Eagles had 213 yards of offense, and the quarterback had 44 yards rushing. That's domination. The Eagles did nothing offensively to make the Bucs think that they were going to beat them anytime soon. And everybody knows if you gave Brady the ball back with eight seconds, he'd have figured out a way to go down and make that happen. So, like I said, it was close. Anybody who had money on the Buccaneers, unfortunately, <laughs> didn't make it for a half a point or one point. But uh, I stopped gambling, and that's probably the best thing I did uh, this year because uh, I got way, way more money because of it. If anybody ever wants to hit me up, it's Ian Beckles at RadioInfluence.com. And hopefully you're listening to my other podcast and Beckles and Retro every day, Monday through Friday on 95.3 WDAE and 6.20 AM. Victory Fridays are always a beautiful thing. Victory Mondays are good as well. But long story short, our Buccaneers are always winning games here, and that's a beautiful thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that game last night, and hopefully the Buccaneers get it done again next week. Have a wonderful weekend, and please be safe. Peace out. You have been in the trenches with Ian Beckles on Radio Influence. This is a Forking Around Town with Tracy Guida Quick Fix on Radio Influence. Today I'm excited because we get to talk about one of my favorite things in the world, which is pizza. And I'm joined today by Marco and Brittany from Alfonso's Pizzeria in Tampa. How are you guys? Just kind of tell me a little bit about the history of of Alfonso's. Um, Okay, well, it started 1978. Um, My dad moved down here from uh, New York. Uh, He was originally from uh, Sicily, Saracusa. But uh, he had a pizzeria up in um, St. Nick, Washington Heights area. I believe it's like Harlem area. But he had that for a few years. And, uh, you know, just like every other Italian wanting to get away from the snow. <laughs> so, you know, so he uh, had a few places in mind. And uh, my uncle had a place near Yankee Stadium. And um, he actually came down first. And he actually opened a place in like South Del Mabry. Right. Right across the street from Plant High School. And that was Caesars. And I remember Caesars. I used to so, go there so back in the day. That's, our same that's, family. that's my uncle. Oh my so gosh. So Savannah, that's all my family. And then, so my dad decided to move his place and my uncle, you know, the, um, made him change his mind to move to Tampa. So that's how it kind of all started. So that we came here awesome. in July 78. Forking Around Town with Tracy Guida can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and RadioInfluence.com.